Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And today we're finally going to finish our owl. And I am so excited because uh, it's one of those things that uh, it's nice to get through it. And I, it took a little longer than I expected on the first coat, but that's, I think, to be expected when you're working on detailed uh, a subject like this. So this is what my first uh, fire came out like. So that's, that gives you an idea of what you can expect on the first fire. And um, you'll see a big difference between this and the second fire. This is my second fire, my final, my final fire. So if you really sat and worked with this for a long period of time, uh, you could easily um, get this done in two fires. The colors that we're going to be using are, we're going to use black, we're going to use, um, this is a yellow, brown, and a gray. A light gray of some sort, you're going to need it for the beak. Um, then we have a south brown, which for me is my orange, so whatever orange you use. Um, a yellow of some sort, um, if you have a sunflower yellow, this is transparency from um, the uh, uh, um, portrait paints. Um, I have a warm brown gray here. If you have um, a rose, uh, dusty rose kind of thing, that might work too. And then um, I have wheat. Now, wheat is new. You could use tan. Um, but I found that um, on the owl that we did together, um, I felt like this section down in here needed a little more work. And I'll show you on the one that I, my final product here, See how different it looks? So I wanted to get more light in that section and more feathers in that section to make it look that way. So the wheat or the tan will do that for you. So if you have wheat or tan, by all means add it to your palette. Brushes that we're gonna need. If you have filberts, they're terrific for this because for feathers, the filbert is a rounded brush like this, has rounded edges on it intentionally, and they come in various sizes, just like anything. Here's the biggest one I have is this one, okay? And I use this on the peonies, and it's kind of um, kind of locked up right now because I haven't. Uh, I found that if you need to soften your brushes, the best thing seems to be um, turpinoid. So I've been putting them in turpinoid when I'm done and just uh, wiping off the excess turpinoids. And uh, that seems to help an awful lot. But uh, yeah, you will need... Um, this is a 12, and this one is a quarter inch, and these are both um, the filberts. And then I have like a, this is a three quarter inch square shader, and I like the metal on this because it kind of helps it hold its shape, and that's what I want. And then you're going to need a super tiny brush. This is a 5-0 uh, brush, and see how tiny it is? I'm going to get it as close as I can so you can see it. Um, so you're going to need that for detail, especially around the eyes and what have you. So I'm just going to start out with a wash up here. It, it's, it's, that's the simplest thing I can suggest. I use a yellow brown. Just get a little, I'm, I'm using the, um, the filbert and I'm just going to put a little bit of a, a wash on here. Now, can you see how it affects it? It's not really too obvious. It's just kind of helping those feathers kind of all look together, you know, kind of like they belong together. So it's just a little yellow brown wash. And then as we get closer to this front line, I'm going to make it a little more intense because this area here actually has a little more of the yellow brown in it on this bird. So I'm making it a little more intense as I go there. Not that intense. Let's let's back off a little, okay. And if you get it on the white, remember you can always get it off with a Q-tip or something. This is one of those. It's rounded as well, but it's a smaller one from um, Burgett Porter. And I can I think I can kind of put a little more of the darkness in there without. Yeah, there we go. So if you have a small rounded brush, great, because what you want to do is kind of keep this rounded look on, on some of his uh, feathers. And, and you also want to add some depth in a couple of spots. So this is all we're doing. Okay, we're gonna put a little in here and a little up in here. 
see it just brings that depth in. Now up in here, I'm just gonna kind of smear a little over that area and it won't be as obvious a circle. There is a circle on these birds up at the top um, and that's where their feathers all come from. And it, it's it's a pretty obvious circle. So um, if you have one there, that's that's fine. And I'm just adding this here and there just to give it a little more, I think, life, you know, a little more color and what have you. Okay. All right. And I think I'm going to come down into here with it. And I think I'm going to come down into here with it just a tad. Okay, what do you think there? That's how he's turning out. I think it helps. And then I'm going to do a little in through here, too, um, because uh, it's a little too obvious, and I want it to be a little less. There we go. There. I think that blends those together a little better. Okay. Now, where else do we need to add color? Um, well, we need to add a little bit of color um, to this uh, over here, which is another yellow brown. I'm just using my square shader and I'm just gonna pull it out. It's nothing too fancy. Just a little bit of yellow brown. I just want to get a little bit of color there. And I don't have the tape on and I probably should because I like the tape, but I took it off and I didn't remember to put it back on this morning. So if you have tape, I would say put the tape on. I'm going to go back to my little brush again, this this little thing, and I'm just going to add a little more depth up in here because I want it to be a little a little darker up in there. Oh, can you, you can't see here. I'll do this. Yeah, I'm just adding a little depth up in here. Okay. All righty. That's that. Now, you notice here on his eyes, the, the darkness is not quite as dark as it was before, so I'm going to add a little more depth there. Just lightly touch it, just enough to get the, the color in. Not enough to... And then here, there we go. Okay. And then there's a little bit of black down in here that we need to reinforce. Okay. Alrighty. Now we're going to start working on his eyes. Uh, before I do that, and before I forget, I'm going to take this yellow brown that I got on here off. So I got some yellow brown on there and I don't want it to stay there. Okay, now that's all clean. So make sure you clean as you go. Okay, and now we're going to work on the yellow around his eyes. I'm going to go back to this brush. I like it a lot. You probably, if you don't have this, you could use a worn brush if you have it, or you could use like a number... I think this is like a, a four. You could probably use a number four. But with the square sides on it, sometimes it's hard to get it to do what you want it to do. Okay, first I'm going to start by adding in here. And if I need to, and I do, um, I need to, to round out a little bit of his eye there. So I'm going to do that. Okay. And over here, I'm going to do the same thing and fill it in a little more. And look at it and see, does it need any rounding out? No, I think this side is a lot better than the other side was. Okay. Clean my brush. And then I'm going to uh, get the transparency on here. Or yellow, whatever yellow you use is fine. And I'm just going to start putting it on. I'm just going to put it on the outside of the eye like this, and the outside of this eye. Let me pull this down a little so it's a little easier to see right here. Oh, let me get a little more color on my brush. Okay, and here we go. And now this one I'm pulling a little more towards the dark now this one I can go towards the dark. I probably shouldn't have put the dark on first and done it second, but it's okay. Okay, so you want his eyes glowing. That's the whole purpose of using this yellow, is to get it to the eyes to glow. 
Okay, there we go. I put a little more right here. Maybe a little right there, okay. So that's what I have for his eyes so far. Now, I'm going to have to eventually put a band around the lower part of his eye right here. But I don't want to do that now because I still have to do all the colors down here. So I'd rather start by doing the colors down here and then going back and putting that in. So I'm going to take um, my square shader, clear it off. This is that little quarter inch. Last time we talked a little bit about um, making it a little darker towards the center around the, the, the bottom of the eye so that it, the eye is set further back. And I'm just, just sort of doing a wash over it right now with kind of a combination of the yellow and the other. Then I'm gonna take a little more of the orange and I'm gonna put a little darker orange right there. Can you see the difference? Make it a little darker there. And then down here, I'm going to be doing the same thing. And I'm just going to put a little bit of orange mixed with a little bit of the uh, yellow-brown. Kind of a side load of the orange with a full load of the yellow-brown. Just to get the color started. And you're basically doing a wash. And then I'm going to turn it around this way because I want to, this part's going to be darker. So you're going to go from the outside in. You want it lighter on the outside of that and darker on the inside. This is a little overdone right there. We're going to take care of that though because we're going to have a little too much orange and then we're going to get rid of it. You can use a little brown if you'd rather use a little brown here. Um, here we go. I do tap into the brown a little and just see there, if you put a little brown in with it, I think it doesn't hurt. And let's put a little brown on this side. You have to balance though. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other. This one I did too heavy handed, so let me get that out of there. Okay. And I'll do this one kind of similar, okay. Oh, this really isn't, oh, I see. I have to come under here. This is that, okay. Okay, clean out for your orange brush. Now you can use one of two things. You can use um, a liner or it dipped in, um, turpentine and wiped off well, or you can use your, this guy, the little pico pay. If you use the pico pay, you're using the side of the pico pay, this part here. You're not using the tip as much, see? Because if you use the tip, you get more of a, um, what do I want to say? You get, you get a lot of lines and things and you don't need that. Now just do it in the, in the outside part. Let me flip this guy around. We'll do this one, too. Wipe it off. Don't forget to wipe it off. Okay. And then you can take a big brush that you've dipped in. I've got this filbert, and you're just going to lightly brush it. So you get rid of all those lines. And if you think there are lines there, hold it up to the light. And look, and if you see a buildup of paint, it's it's always a sign that you're gonna have problems. Okay, now this is a little coarse compared to what it normally would look like. I want it to look a little softer. I'm using gray only now, and I'm just gonna try to soften this a little bit. This is the light gray, and it's on my filbert, and I'm just softening this a little. See how that does it? Look at the other side and you can see the difference. It softens it just a tad, takes that white away, makes it a little softer. Same thing on this side, 
a little gray, just a little gray. Now his beak is definitely going to be gray. So I'm going to get my, this is my, back to my little rounded brush, little four or whatever it is. And you're going to put a dark and maybe mix a little brown with the gray. I mean, black with the gray. And you're going to put a little, a little here and a little here. You may have to wipe it off and just kind of there. Okay. And then you're going to put a gray down the center of his beak. Oh, let me get it here. I'm using Copenhagen gray. You can use any color gray you have, but you want it down the center and up at the top where this is right here. You kind of want a, a little line. Oh, come on, you black. I'm trying to get the black on there. Just so it separates a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to take my baby, 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 baby brush. And I'm just going to do the nostrils. One here. One here. One on each side. And I'm going to reinforce this here. And I'm also going to take this and do a few lines across his nose. One there. One there. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit of black on my big brush again, and I'm just going to add a little there so that you can see that beak. I'm not adding a lot. I'm just adding a little on each uh, shoot a little on each side of the beak. And you're gonna have a little more, almost like a wash of black, a little in here, and just a tad right there. And if it's too dark, you can always lift out some of the dark. Okay. Now you're going to take your littlest brush and you're going to very gently put a very dark black circle, even if you have to go over it twice, around the eye. Look at the difference of those eyes, will you please? Doesn't that make a huge difference. And you may need to take a little bit of the orange off of here if you can. Give it a little more. There. I could only do that because that's the orange I just put up there and I'm going to do it here too before I put the eye in just so I don't have. Okay. And I'm going to do it on the other side. So see the difference? Isn't that amazing? Now, I don't have a real steady hand. That's why I like this um, turntable, because I can, I can really be steady on the turntable. And I can turn it the direction that works the best for me. So you notice I turn this because I prefer to hold my brush backhanded to do this kind of stuff. So... Whatever way you want to paint, that's the way you need to turn the piece you're working on. Now, don't worry if you get too much out here. You can take care of that. It's like if you get too much inside the eye. Ah, see, I got to work it backhanded. And I just did that there, didn't I? If you get too much inside the eye, you take a brush, make sure you have turpentine, and just do that. Okay. And 
you have to make this super dark. So this, I think, is the hardest part of the whole darn thing. Then look at it. I see some thickness here that it shouldn't have. I take that away. I'm gonna take a little transparency and put back, and a little here. And on the outside, if on the outside of the eye you see a little, like right here, then you need to correct that. The eyes are too important. If there's a problem with the eye, it'll be noticeable. Make sure your eyes are well done. Okay, now I'm gonna look around the eye and I see a couple places where I wished I had not put quite so much orange. I still have a problem up in here. So I'm, this is, has turpentine on it and I'm just, and I'm wiping it off as I go. Just pulling it out there. You want it, you do want the color a little darker towards the eye and not as dark. Um, and he has these little, I don't even know if you can see the one here. Let me see if I can put a little, it needs a little orange on it, I think. Yeah, there's one here too. It probably needs a little black on it. He has these little, like, almost like eyebrows. And you want to make sure you can see those. This is fur down here. But the top part goes over it, so that's fine. So now it's just the bottom that we're going to do. And this has to face me, so I'm going to move it way up here so you can see it. And what side are we not seeing? We're not seeing this side. So let me move it over that way even more. Okay. All right. I'm going to take my filbert. I'm dipping it in my oil. This is the large one. This is the 12. And I'm going to use wheat. This is my wheat. Now, if you don't have wheat, you can use tan. If it's too dark, mix it with a little white. And what you wanna do is you wanna just go back over this section here and give it a real facelift. Cause they're, the feathers are very much together down here. Keep loading your brush, don't stop. Keep loading your brush as you use up the color You might have to load both sides of your brush to get the color the way you want it. Don't make them too thick. This one is too thick. I'm gonna wipe it off. You want them just the top of the brush. And that's why I say these filberts are great for this. Some of this that you're doing here, you want it to be very close together, but just the tip. See how I'm just barely touching that? And you really want it to be down there too. You want it to be further apart, closer together. And closer together as you get from the top to the bottom. These should be closer than the bottom. Look at that. Doesn't that just give you a wonderful feathery look? Okay, and then we're gonna do the other side so I can move back now. And I'm going to do this side. I have to do this facing me. I'm sorry. I'm going to start out with that. And if it's not dark enough, then I, or yellow enough, I'm going to, or beige enough, then I'm going to go back in and see how I'm putting these. I'm putting them really close together. 
And you see how that really gives it a feathery look down there? It's amazing what the Big Filbert will do for you. And I have one, um, I have a 12, I have the quarter inch, I have one that's sort of in between. What size is that? Here it is. I have a um, 3 8 inch. And then I have this monster one, which is great for blending. And um, I just, I love the filberts. Okay. And then don't forget to sign. And when you sign, now you, you could sign and etch it in, which I should have done on the first fire. That would have been good. But I think if I sign now, I'll just sign over on this side, right on the white and black. That's what I'll probably do. So now this is the final product for this guy, except for my name. And this is the final product on the first guy that I did. Uh, pick up those brushes, keep painting, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.